this is police brutality. It is an excessive use of deadly force, and the cop that did this should be both fired, which has already happened, and prosecuted in a court of criminal law, which I'm sure is going to happen. Now, this is idiotic content posted by a moron who lacks both intelligence and a basic moral compass. I'm Patriot Dow, everyone's favorite trans species pot belly pig, and social media has been blowing up like crazy over the death of George Floyd, a man who was killed after police kept their knee on his throat after the man had already been detained and handcuffed. The video clearly shows the man begging for air, but the cop would not let go. George Floyd consequently blacked out and died as a result. I'm assuming you already know what happened here, so I'm not going to dwell on this, but I'll say this again. What happened to George Floyd was 100% wrong, and the cops should be both fired and prosecuted. He was already detained and neutralized, and there was no reason for the cops to continue choking him out, and they have no excuse for doing so. None. But how did I reach that conclusion? Well, unlike your generic Black Lives Matter activist, I saw the video, learned what happened, and can conclusively say that this was excessive force. I considered the evidence and decided that I could reach that conclusion. What did I not do? I didn't simply look at the skin color of the people involved and immediately pretend like I knew what happened. I didn't simply see a white cop killing a black person and assume the worst. I didn't follow a blanket narrative about quote-unquote racist policing that literally creates angry Twitter mobs anytime police kills a black person. Instead, as everyone should, I judged this on a case-by-case -case basis and reached a decision that was independent of my political biases. I will not use this one incident to justify some racially charged, irresponsible, race war-esque narrative about cops, because as conservatives are always saying on this issue, there are good cops and there are bad cops, and that needs to be judged on an individual basis, not a race war between whites and blacks, okay? Now onto the issue of LeBron James. When this video went viral, LeBron James posted this photo on Instagram, in response, and as usual, it was shared around by leftists everywhere saying, Oh my god, woke, praying emoji. Now the photo shows the George Floyd killing next to a photo of Fidel Castro praiser Colin Kaepernick kneeling for the national anthem and states, quote, This is why. Except, no. One killing in cold blood is not an excuse to disrespect our country. And the cop was fired. More than likely not going to be prosecuted. So, a cop did a bad thing and is now facing justice for that bad thing that he did. Keeping in mind the fact that there are obviously bad people out there, I'd consider the fact that this bad cop got fired for what he did to be, well, justice. Is that not justice? Now, it would be one thing, it would be a valid argument if incidents like this were happening daily across the country. But they're not. There's a reason this incident sparked so much outrage. Because it's rare. It doesn't happen a lot. But LeBron James, of course, as usual, views himself as a social justice king on social justice issues. Now, I could question his motives, and I will. I could point out the fact that other black civilians are statistically far, far more likely to kill a black person than a cop is, and yet we don't get any this is why we kneel post for the far greater epidemic of black on black violence. But I'll take a step back from that. Because who is this basketball player who sees himself as the hero of speaking out against oppression? Well, let's see. LeBron is the same idiot who called the Hong Kong protesters who are fighting objectively, objectively far worse oppression than any perceived forms of oppression in the United States. He called them uneducated. But I believe he wasn't educated on, on, on the situation at hand. He straight up trashed one of the most momentous fights for real justice in modern world history. LeBron James is a fake justice warrior that is completely full of crap. He is in absolutely no position to talk about the oppression, quote unquote, of anyone. An issue he has downright proved he doesn't actually care about. He has no credibility whatsoever, he stands for absolutely nothing genuine, and he should really just shut the hell up and leave his hatred for our country to himself. There. I said it. Bold of me, right? But what did I say that was wrong? LeBron doesn't give a crap about fighting oppression. He straight up disses people who actually fight against oppression. What he does care about is a thinly veiled excuse to hate police and hate the United States of America in the name of fake oppression that doesn't exist. And I already know what someone is going to comment. Kneeling for the flag doesn't actually mean you hate our country. Or let's read off this famously idiotic headline that says, Colin Kaepernick's national anthem protest is the most American thing you can do. 
Let's pretend for a moment that kneeling for the national anthem is not blatantly disrespectful. So we can forgive all these other NFL players if we want. Okay. This post is about Colin Kaepernick. That is the same person who wore a shirt to a press conference praising Fidel Castro. I'm fairly certain an outspoken fan of Fidel Castro is not leading some grand American patriotic fight when they kneel for the anthem. Pretty sure, okay? Kneeling is clearly meant to disrespect the United States when it's done by someone like that. Prove me wrong. LeBron James, for his own, trashed the Hong Kong protesters. These are the Hong Kong protesters. Supporting them is by far one of the most American things you can do. Instead, LeBron openly dissed them. One of the most Chinese things you can do. Of course, by Chinese, I refer to being in support of their government, not the ethnicity itself. Stupid that I have to say that, but of course I have to say that. Obviously, I'm referring to their government. So to recap, we have Fidel Castro lover and Xi Jinping lover openly hating on the United States. And of course, someone will still come to me saying, they don't actually hate their country. They're just fighting for justice. And of course, you'd be just as full of crap as they are. They hate our country. Case closed. Now, LeBron is allowed to hate our country. It's his right. It seems kind of self-destructive to willingly live in a country that you hate, but fine. But he should really stop pretending to be the social justice warrior against oppression, quote unquote. He has no credibility to speak on anything oppression related, and nobody except President Xi should take a political word that comes out of his mouth seriously. End of discussion. That'll be all for today. Be sure to subscribe if you like what you saw, and be sure to read my comment section if you're an angry LeBron defender. But I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.